In this video, I'm going to talk about new tool that was just released by KDP Tools on Gumroad. It is a PowerPoint based tool, so that's why I'm mentioning this early on in the video. In case you are not using PowerPoint to create your books, you can skip this video. Also, this video was requested. If you have a request of your own, comment down below or send me a message on Facebook. And if this is your first time, on my channel, visiting my channel. Welcome, my name is Marina from Marina Art Design and here I'm sharing my journey of turning active effort into passive income. Questions I've, I will try to answer in this video will be what is a mega tool? Do you need it if you already have Luke Bows software or Hands by Book Publisher Tools or similar software? And how to use mega tool? Now, uh, you see here I'm on Amazon.com and my search term is puzzle books for adults. Now, if I scroll down, you're going to see that we have a lot of puzzle books. Puzzle books are one of those evergreen things that you can do all year round. You can easily niche down. You can also make them seasonal as well, occasional. So you have lots of options. Now, if you see videos promising you, you can make $7,000 a month from publishing puzzle books. Yes, it is possible, but not easy. And most likely it's not going to happen for a large number of viewers. So if you see these search results here, most of them do not have any rank. So that means they did not sold one single copy so that would make me uh, for you you start thinking okay there is no money in puzzle books but then you have like an odd uh, situation where you have for example this book that was just released recently seven days ago and it is number one new release in quizzes it has it's just a simple crossword puzzle book it has 15 cross 50 crosswords i mean i can give you that little literally five minutes you, you send me a message on Facebook and Marina, can you give me 50 American crossword puzzles and like that in five minutes, I'm sending you five, 50 puzzles, completely unique, original created for you. So that's not an issue. So this part is not that hard. And if you scroll down, we will see that the BSR is quite low. Now, why is this book selling compared to all the others that are not selling? Uh, I'm not going to in, go into that in this video because I don't know how to explain that to you. And also there are a couple of books with absolutely hideous, hideous cover. And for some reason they are selling and then you have uh, books with beautiful cover and they are not selling. So it's just like, it's too random for anybody to be able to teach you, okay, if you do this, 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 and this, you will 99.9% .9 sure have sales. There is absolutely no way. So you have beautiful covers, not getting sales, beautiful cover, getting sales, horrible covers, getting sales. I mean, it's just completely random, too random that uh, it can be taught, okay, do this and you will have sales. But it is one of those evergreen things that you can do and you have a plenty of tools available to generate puzzles or to compile them into a book. So you have plenty of those uh, tools. And I'm going to switch now to my uh, Gumroad library. Now, if you never purchased anything on Gumroad, if you do purchase something ever, make sure that you are using the same email all the time. And that is an email that you can actually can access because from time to time, if you log out from your Gumroad, it's going to ask you that you check uh, your login in your email. Now, what is the benefit of using constantly same email, good email for purchase on Gumroad? The benefit is that, as you can see here, everything that I purchased ever on Gumroad is here. So if I scroll all the way down, you can see that the first thing I purchased on Gumroad is actually open dyslexic font. It is a font that covers wide spectrum of readers. And it is the font that I usually use when I'm working on children's books, just to cover all my bases. And this is the reason why I want to show you my Gumroad library. So just remember that if you purchase something and you delete it from your computer by accident, or you lost your license key, just go to your Gumroad account, go to library, 
jewelry and you will see all your purchases here no matter how long it takes long time you purchase them i believe i purchased this three years ago so it doesn't matter they will be here you can always download the files and if for example some tools are constantly upgrading updating you can click here and download the new version of the program but this is what i want to show you today in this video and this is what i want to show you in my gumroad library when i was first researching kdp I, of course i wanted to do puzzles logic based puzzles because i love puzzles i love solving them so it is natural that i want to make books that i would buy and i was uh, i'm working as a teacher i'm working in powerpoint i'm working with powerpoint for over 20 25 years and logically i'm going to make books in powerpoint because it is the easiest thing to do for me so i was looking for a tool that can help me out when it comes to designing and compiling the book and especially if i'm going to make a couple of books in the same style so that means i need to have something that can create a template and then i'm using that template to make more books in the same style so this was a test version two years ago it was not released as a full version at that time because I know if you are not in developing, if you are not in PowerPoint, it's going to sound strange. How come it takes this long to develop a software? Yes, it actually takes this long. You can have like 10 thousands of pages of code and then it's just not working and you end up like you're missing a comma, you're missing a colon or just one word is off and then entire code crashes. So it takes time to develop software, takes time to bug, clear it from everything and test everything. So this is the tool I was very interested in. I love everything that was offering, but it was just a free trial version at the time. It was not released as a full version. And as you can see here, then I've discovered Luke Baus. I switched to his tools and then I discovered Hans and then I purchased uh, book publisher tools, so Puzzle Maker Pro but if i scroll up you will see that the kdp mega tool is finally back it is live it is working perfectly i used it to generate a puzzle book as a sample just to make sure everything is working and that's that is what i'm going to show you in today's uh, video this kdp uh, mega tool she's on gumroad so this is her gumroad store so you have a lot of different tools that you can check out in her store this kdp mega tool is where is it it is somewhere here it is this one the price is 30 dollars is just 30 dollars so for me it's no brainer to purchase this like i said because i'm heavily using powerpoint i'm using powerpoint to design to create books almost everything when it comes to uh, working on computer and working online so this is that kdp mega tool she also has her youtube channel on her youtube channel she prepared six videos they do not have a voiceover and if they do have voiceover it is ai generated i know some of you that requested this video asked that you do not like ai uh, voiceover but the reason why <laughs> uh sometimes it is easier to just use ai voiceover is because it's it's easier you do not have to edit yourself you do not have to cut your coughs and and sneezings and stuff like that and mistakes you make it's not it's not an easy job to generate uh produce one video that is actually going to live live on youtube i mean this video if i'm going to be honest i'm trying to record this video for three days now so this is my 16th attempt every time i just i make a mistake and then i go back or i didn't open a window that's supposed to be open when i wanted it and i just ah uh, just okay let's do it all over again and it's never ending story so i hope this time i'm going to be able to finish it and publish it today that's the plan today is monday is it monday today yes it's monday the beginning of the new week it is july so we need to get ready for q4 so let's get this going this is her video and this kdp mega tool puzzle planner tutorial this one is the best for you to check out at the beginning to just get general idea what the tool is about but i also want to mention something in case you are using canva 
okay so follow me if you are using canva and if you used bulk creating canva so what is bulk creating canva so in canva you can create your pages like normal you can create your book everything but you can also do this can I, i'm not going to zoom in because then i'm not going to see entire page but you see this one here if you put it in these brackets and then you put a word here then you can use bulk create to target this object here as a placeholder and you can paste any text you want into this placeholder automatically so that is bulk create but the important thing is that you need to have a placeholder somewhere on your page somewhere in your design so somewhere on any of the pages that is labeled specifically so it has a unique name so this one has a unique name and the name is page so whatever i set in my excel file that is going to go under page placeholder that is going to be replaced here in canva so this is an example of a page that you could create in canva if if bulk create had image import so let me scroll one more page down so this is an example of your canva book page template you have a puzzle placeholder you have a quote placeholder and you have a page number placeholder so if i go to apps and look for bulk create and then i select enter data manually here i would type the name page and here i would type the name quote and then i would add one more uh, uh, column for puzzle maybe not 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 uh, but I'm add image okay so image would be puzzle and then whatever i type here whatever text i can copy paste text here i don't have to type it so whatever i type here and here so this would be page one this would be page two come on page this is why i don't like <laughs> this is why i don't like canva come on canva do you think and then whatever text you want here and here and then this is an issue here you see here where it says puzzle image now you can copy paste text it doesn't matter it can be 100 200 entries doesn't matter but for uh, image you cannot copy paste like links from your computer where the images are you actually need to link to the image that is uploaded in your file folder on canva so each image has to be imported here individually so that is the issue of canva bulk create you can create book without images quickly you prepare the text you prepare the text labels here click enter and it's going to import all the quotes in all the places where this wording is appearing one by one going from top to bottom but canva bulk create doesn't have image import you would actually have to go to your uploads and then select this one and put it into excel select this one and put it into excel select this one select this one and then it is going to connect this with this one this with this one and so on but the reason why i'm showing you this is the same logic of bulk create is what kdp mega tools is actually using and i'm going to switch to this one here so this is a quick template i generated well three days ago not today three days ago when i was uh, making a file for this video so as you can see here i have this classic puzzle book with two puzzles per page this is a six by nine book so you cannot fit more than two puzzles on each page so this is my book template now i can reuse this template over and over again using kdp mega tools i just need to give the instruction to the mega tool what puzzle folder to use for puzzles what solution folder to use for solutions and it's going to generate a new puzzle book so by using this template here so this is only one so you only need to create your template once and if you're happy with the layout and everything you just import same or different 
puzzles. When I say same, I mean like Sudoku 1, Sudoku 2, Sudoku 3. I do not mean literally same puzzles. Avoid using duplicate content on Amazon KDP. But like I said, same puzzles, meaning same type of puzzles or different puzzles. You can have crossword, mazes. I don't know. You have like six, 600 Japanese logic puzzles. So you have a lot of options to choose. So this is a page where you fit solutions. And at the beginning, you will see I have this book belongs to. I have copyright page. And then I have two pages that are blank. And the reason why I left them blank is if I'm going to change the type of the puzzle, then I just need to put here the tutorial how to solve that specific puzzle. But in overall, this is my template for my puzzle book. So if I use KDP tool, let me scroll to the beginning. So if I use KDP mega tool, I select my puzzle folder, solution folder, and it's just going to import. So this is now imported and this is a finished book that I can export as PDF and upload to Amazon. The margins that you see here are not random. So the KDP Mega Tool is calculating the exact margins depending on your book trim size and how many pages you have. So that is also a neat feature. So I have puzzles, as you saw, just saw, and I have solutions. But, okay, you're going to say, Marina, I can do that. So this would be an example of a book. So this is a six by nine book. Ignore my uh, Hello Kitty <laughs> ruler. That was the only thing I had in the apartment. If you watched my previous video and if you follow me on Facebook, then you know my office was flooded and I do not have my fancy professional ruler. So I stole one from my daughter to measure this. So this is approximately, I don't know, maybe 19 centimeters or something like that. I have no idea how much is that in inches, but it is a six by nine book. And you see it, like I said, you cannot go six here. Absolutely, there is no way people can put anything. So this is an example of those typical puzzle books. So you have two puzzles, you have tutorial. I, I, I took a screenshot because I like how tutorial is placed here. So you have one that is smaller and then the rest of it is bigger. And here you have example of puzzle and solution. So even, you see, even Samurai Sudoku can fit on 6x9, but as you can see, only one puzzle fits on 6x9. So this is something that you can create easily with Luke Baus and our Hans Publisher tools. And when I say easily, I mean you use Image Importer and then you pick how many images to import. So you can import two images, six images, 12 images. It doesn't matter, but what uh, Luke Baus, for example, let's say Luke Baus image importer for uh, from Puzzle Generator, you see here, bulk import images. What this one is going to do, it is going to import images mathematically. So if you select six images per page and you can set how far they're going to be from top, bottom, left and right. And that's it. After that, the program is going to import images mathematically to fit six images on one slide. So that would be something like this. So that is how you can create these puzzle books. But what if this is a puzzle book that you want to create? Now, if you want to create this kind of puzzle, you have two options. You can do this manually. So each page is done manually, where in one corner you have maze and then you have a different puzzle, then you have a different puzzle or you can use KDP Megapulse. And I'm going to show you how. So like I said, the logic, let me delete, I have something in the back. I'm going to delete this one. So I'm going to use this as a, as a frame, as a frame. So let's go to insert and shape. So I'm going to generate a shape here. So let's say this shape is where I want maze to be. And remember from Canva, it is very important that you name objects properly. And each object that is going to be for a specific kind of puzzle or sp for specific text needs to have a unique name. So for example, here I want to have a maze. So I'm going to rename this and put the name maze. So that is going to give the opportunity to KDP Mega Tool to target this shape. And when uh, the program asks me, okay, Marina, what 
are the images? Where are the images that you want to put here? And I'm just going to give him a link to a folder where I have mazes and it's going to take images from that folder and import them on every slide. So I do not need to have this box on every slide. The program is going to look on every slide that I have this shape and it's going to import mazes into that shape. So this is a maze shape. So let's continue insert shape. Let's add another one. I'm going to have an image here for um, seek and search to find the differences. So let's name this one find. And I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to have this one as differences. So the name is differences. Maybe it is spelled correctly. Maybe it is spelled wrong. We do not care. And here I'm going to have dot to dot. Let's do the name dot, dot, dot to dot. And one more insert shape. And here is, I don't know, blackout. Let's call it blackout. Blackout. Okay, now I need to have my text boxes. So this is important when it comes to text boxes. The order you want images to be imported is the order you create shapes. So for example, I just created this shape. I want this to be puzzle one and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And then on next page, I want this to be seven. So continuation of from the previous uh, slide. So if I want this to be the number 1 and 7 and 14 and so on, this is my first shape and this is where I'm going to place it. Because if I duplicate this a couple of times and now I mix them, then I have now, now I have literally no idea which one is first. So if I just put this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here, and now I want this to be 1, 2, three, four. It is not going to be one, two, three, four, because I have no, absolutely no idea in what order did I generate these shapes. So let's delete them completely and start over. So I know the order. So this is the shape number one. I can duplicate it now. It doesn't matter. Duplicate, but now I know this is two. So I'm going to rename this one as text. Text. This one is also going to be text. So I'm not adding numbers here. So text, text. So I want this to be puzzle one, puzzle two, duplicate. So this is my third shape. Also, the name is text because I duplicated it. This is going to be number three. And let's move this down. Number three and duplicate. And this is number four. So one, two three, four. So that is how my puzzles are going to go. And that is how numerical order is going to go. And now I can delete this back image here. And now I have this weird shape here. And now I can duplicate this page as much as I want, if I want to duplicate, or I can switch to another page and I can create something different. So it doesn't matter. I can use the same name. So I can copy here. I can have on this page, I can have a maze here on the bottom. The only thing that is important is if I want mazes to go here or wherever on the slide, I just need to make sure that the name of this shape is what I'm targeting it. It doesn't have to be maze. You can put banana, kiwi, whatever. The, just the name needs to be unique. Of course, logically, it is better that you use the name that you can easily identify so you can target that folder. So let's put maze here. Let's, in fact, let's delete this. Let's duplicate this slide. And now I'm going to move things around. But keep in mind, I'm not going to move this one but by much because i want to remember the order one two three four so now i'm going to have puzzles here and here and i'm going to move this one up and i'm going to put this one here and i'm going to put this one here so now the order of numbers is going to be one two three four or it's going to be five six seven eight but now i have a different layout with different puzzles on different location 
Of course, now I can add, maybe I can turn this, I do not want this to be dot to dot, I want this to be Sudoku. So on this page, I'm going to have a couple of previous puzzles, and this puzzle, it needs to be square, so let's increase it. So this is now going to be my Sudoku shape. So that is how you create a template. So you just place objects and shapes how you want your puzzle book to look like. And once you are happy with the layout, you can create one page, two pages, 100 unique pages, and then go to KDP Mega Tool and select Create Template. It's going to pop up the window and you see here in case you forgot to rename some of the shapes you can now select them and rename them here so this is in case you forgot to rename some of the shapes i'm going to unclick and it says here create template from active slide so click on this until all shapes are no longer blue so now everything here is actually a template the program is going to target and ask me marina what do you want for me to place here? What do you want for me to place here? What do you want for me to place here? And I'm going to switch to a different slide and I'm going to create template from this one as well. So click until everything is no longer blue. So now I have two pages that are template. So if I go to here in this section so this is once you purchase kdp mega tool it is going to open as a icon or a tool on your toolbar on your ribbon on the top and then you're going to see this here these sections i'm going to talk about these individual sections in a moment just give me a second i want to just continue to finish this what i had going on so if now i want to import text i would go here insert text and you see here it is asking me it is showing me everything that i have on the entire presentation all the shapes so logically i have pictures and then i have text shape fine shape differences shape and just for the sake of the argument i'm going to use text shape now you can copy paste text here you do not have to type it but I'm going to do it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the last one is going to be banana. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I will just want to show you how the system is working. So I have my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, lines of text. And here on the bottom is telling me how many shapes I have in entire presentation that have a name text. So it says eight. So that means I have eight. I have enough. Uh, if you do not know how to move to a new line, you need to hold uh, shift or oh sorry, control and enter to move to another line. If you want to type the data here, but in most cases you will going to copy paste text here. So now I have everything ready. I'm happy with how everything looks like. I'm going to click insert text. And it says eight of eight shapes have been filled. So let's see what has happened in the back. Now this here, you see, one, two, three, four. You see, this is what I told you. If you do not follow the order of creation, then it's going to mess up the order of the text. But this is a trick. This is the trick I do just so I do not create entire book template and then I have to redo it again. I create one page and then I test run it with the text import. And then now that you see how I now shifted. Now I can delete the text from all these shapes. And if I run the importer again, so I'm going to delete the shapes. I just want to show you that banana is here. So banana is eight, so five, six, I want this to be seven, I want this to be eight. So let's delete the content. I do not have to delete it manually. I believe there is option that you can click. Let's confirm. Insert text. Yes, you also can delete text from shapes. So I'm going to select once again text. I'm going to write the same block of text one two three four five six seven and finally banana insert text and let's see what's going to happen do you see now 
So now I have one, two, three, four. So that is my advice. If you are not sure about generating the shapes and the order of generating the shapes, run a test once. Once you run a test, move them around. Once you see the order, how the program is importing text inside. And once you have that, delete the text. Now I have the other images, but let's test delete. Okay, it is not working. And the reason why it's not working, it's not because of the program. Bruh. So you can delete this manually, or you can use that option to delete all the text boxes. Okay, so that is how you create a template. That is how you can create a template. It doesn't have to be puzzle book. It can also be a guided journal, for example. Let's go to new slide. Okay, so you see now when I go to home and I click on the new slide, this is what is going to happen to you as well. You're going to see a bunch of these templates for uh, daily planner, weekly planner, journal, logbooks. You also have the low content book templates like cursive paper, half wide rule paper, college ruled, wide rule, graph paper, sheet music. So you have all of that here already included. So if you uh, select one of these templates, if you like one of these templates, you see you're going to get automatically a template for generating a planner. So you have that here, but what I wanted to do is I want to insert blank slide. Okay, uh, what was I talking? So blank slide is here. You generate the template, position your shape, and then you can target each shape and import text and import images. So let me go here under KDP. So this was how to insert text. Once you are finished with inserting text, you can easily format text text. You can target that shape. You see, you can target that shape and then you can do whatever you want with the text within that shape. Or you can also import text using uh, Excel file. On the insert pictures is here. So the same concept as insert text. You select the shape, for example, Sudoku. And then it is asking you select picture folder. Now, it is best that within this folder, you only have pictures for this book. And the order the images are going to be imported is uh, by name of the uh, pictures in that folder. So if your uh, files are Sudoku 1, Sudoku 2, Sudoku 3, Sudoku 4, Sudoku 5, that is the order they're going to be imported inside inside uh, the PowerPoint. Here you can filter option. For example, if you have within that folder, if you have a bunch of SVG images, PNG images, JPEG images, you can filter if you just want SVG images to be imported. But, 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 I would not force, I mean, the program can do that. It is designed to do that. But I would not complicate things too much, especially if you do not have a strong computer and they can get wild and do crazy things. Just make it simple. It doesn't cost you and nothing of your time to just make an extra folder where, and within that folder, just keep images for your current project, current book, and then import using that folder. And um, you can also clear once you finish, if you, for example, do not like it, if something is wrong, you can clear all the shapes that you selected here. But that is one of the reasons why I would always prepare template. And then when I'm working on actual book, I'm never going to use the template file. I'm going to make a copy of the template file. So if something goes wrong, I can just delete and start over using the template file. So this is how you insert pictures. This is how you insert text. And then you also have another option that is a combo between these two. And that is the one that I actually used for this here. And that is if you are creating specifically puzzle books that have only one type of puzzles. This is important. Just one type of puzzle. So let's say just Sudoku, just mazes, just crosswords, just word search. You can use this feature. So this feature is a combo 
let me go back, sorry, a little here. So this feature is a combo between importing puzzles and solutions. So it is going to ask you where do you want puzzles to be imported and where do you want solutions to be imported and then where are they so puzzle folder solution folder and once you click insert puzzles and solutions it's going to generate entire book with just a couple of clicks so this one is to import images for both puzzles and solutions so two different kinds of images while this one is only inserting pictures one at a time so one shape one folder one shape one folder you can do puzzles here and run it and then solutions and run it so you can do the same thing here so this is specifically for creating puzzle books so let's go from the beginning what else do you have with this tool here at the beginning uh, on the left you have trim sizes so here you have a setting for trim sizes the drop menu opens up and you can select all the standard kdp trim sizes here you can select and this is important how many pages approximately you're going to have and if you select one of these values it is going to change the inner and outer margins so the spine margins closer to the spine they are changing so if you have more pages then one of these margins needs to be wider not both so the three margins are always the same the top bottom and the outside margin is always the same no matter how many pages you have you can have thousands of pages this is going to be the same the margin that is changing is the margin that is close to book spine it needs to be wider and wider and wider depending how many pages you have so this program is going to automatically i'm not sure can you see that change of this green let me try again let me try minimum and then I'm going to go to some drastic numbers so you can hopefully see it. Okay, I, I hope you saw the jump. So this is how this is how much you need to have if your book pages are 800 and something. So that is, and you can also hide them if you don't want to see them, or you can set them manually here. So you can set manual margins. Also, if you select bleed and no bleed, it is going to automatically add the bleed dimensions to your book pages and click X. So that is this first section. You also have option to insert templates as well that are pre-made. So you have basic templates, puzzle templates, story templates. So those templates are already included in the program. You get them for free. I mean, you get them included in the program. You can also generate planner here. So you can select one of the uh, pre-made templates for planner, seven days, three days, Monday first, and the Sunday first, stuff like that. And you can format dates, you can set font size, uh, European way of uh, formatting dates, everybody on the planet formatting dates, and then United States formatting of dates. So you have that here, so you can easily create planner that you can edit later on here you can duplicate slides delete all slides or you can import export slides from a different presentation into this one this is what i told you already to format shapes with pictures this is to format shapes with text this is to format all the shapes that you have on all slides by targeting them individually per name so if you want to change the border color width thickness stuff like that you can do that with this one here and this one is interesting and this one is going to work if you had chat gpt api key so if you have it here type it here and then go to creative writing and it's going to connect to chat gpt so for example i want to have uh, uh, um, short stories target audience uh, children let's go children language english fantasy sad title ideas what should be part of the prompt part of the prompt should be fairies do i know how to spell fairies no i do not but i know how to spell mermaid 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 and I want it to generate title ideas. 
compose prompt and here you have a prompt that you can copy paste into chat gpt or you can if you if you have that api key you can send prompt to chat gpt if you are connected to internet of course sorry i need to stand up sit anymore and it's going to generate me some of the titles so the mermaid's tear for goodbye mermaid secret wish mermaid heartache mermaid's journey home you see i have a couple of uh, titles generated by chat gpt so you can generate all kinds of text here just the same as you're using chat gpt but the benefit it is that you have it here you can easily copy that to clipboard and paste them inside the shape i believe you can also yeah so you can uh, select the shape so let's say quote do i have quote i do not have quote but i have for example if i had a shape that is named quote and then i ask chat gpt to generate quotes it is going to just copy paste line by line from chat gpt into that shape everywhere in the presentation this is these are hyperlinks to writing tools so you have a link to chat gpt you have link to ai detector and uh, plagiarism tracker plagiar yes that is how you pronounce plagiarism <laughs> And then you have Grammarly as well to check, uh, to check, check grammar. That's it. What else do we have here? Quotes, trivia and prompts. Yeah, so this is to import quotes into quote uh, or affirmations and prompts, and jokes, riddles, all of that. So this is for generating and then importing easy into specific shape here. And that's it that is the tool if you have any questions because this video as i mentioned at the beginning was requested it was just to showcase what is mega tool and how to use it quickly briefly just so people know what they can ask me further so this was just a requested video to show what is kdp mega tools now that you know what kdp mega tools is the as i said price is 30 dollars it is powerpoint it is on windows uh, if you are still not sure do you want to purchase it ask me down below ask me on my facebook group what else what do you want me to showcase here do you want me to actually make entire book like this one and then show you how everything works or i don't know if you have any questions i believe i showed everything that i was supposed to show you in this quick short tutorial regarding kdp mega tools thank you very much hope you have a nice day hope this video was uh, educational and until the next video i'll see you down below in the comments stay safe everybody bye